Oh, praise the Lord, saints. We want to thank you once again for joining in to our weekly Bible study. Um, and uh, let us not tarry, beloved. Let us get to the Word. And so we want to pick back up with where we left off on last week. We're talking about the building of the house. After the foundation is laid, the Scripture tells us that even as we've been added to the foundation, we have a responsibility ourselves uh, to be careful how we build upon the house. And so last week we started with that foundation. And the scripture tells us that Jesus Christ himself is that very foundation. Uh, and so this week we want to continue, and we'll continue from the same passage of scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, it's where we left off. We're going to begin in verse number 17. Uh, and the scripture begins this way, he says, uh, And came and preached peace to you, which were far off, and to them that were nigh. It's Christ who is our peace. He came and preached peace unto us, unto them which were far off, and also to them which were nigh. Uh, because it is through Him that both entities you now have access by one Spirit unto the Father. And of course, them, them which were far off, uh, those are the Gentiles. Uh, in, in a sense throughout Scripture, and uh, the, particularly the Old Testament and during the time of Christ, you really only had two groups of people. There was, there was the, uh, the, the Jews and the Gentiles. Uh, much in the same way that it, it really is today, if, if, if you really look at it from that vantage point, you're either saved or you aren't, or you're unsaved. You're either a part of the body of Christ or you are not a part of the body of Christ. But here in the scripture he says, so he came and preached peace. Came and preached peace. He who is peace. He came and declared peace. He who is peace came and declared that very peace. Peace, peace as we discussed on last week, beloved, peace is, is the bringing together. It's the binding and joining together once again that which was divided or separated. And it is through the work of Christ that He has made way for us to be reconciled unto God. And He said in this reconciliation, it had nothing to do with, with your nationality. It had nothing to do with whether or not you were Jew or Greek or black, white, green or yellow. He said because of the finished work, he has now given this access uh, unto Christ, unto God Himself through Him. And he says, and this access is given to both groups, to those who were afar off and to also those who were nigh. Uh, in this sense, is talking about the Jews themselves. And so he says here, he says, so both groups through Him have access by one Spirit unto God the Father, both groups. Uh, whereas those groups were separate before, uh, now both of them are able to be reconciled unto God and reconciled even with one another by the Spirit of God. So watch, watch as, he, as he goes on, he says, so, so, so how does this happen? He says, it is at the place of justification. So as we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, it says, then we are, we are filled with the Spirit of God. And it is this Spirit now that unites us one with the other. It says, so, so in Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5 puts it this way. He says, so being justified by faith, says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God. We've been joined together again with God. We've been bound together again with God. We who were afar off and also those who were not, we both have this peace with God in His reconciliation because of our connection with Jesus Christ. Well, watch what else he says. He says, not only do we have peace, but now we also have, through this same Jesus Christ, we have Access to His grace. We have access to His grace. His grace has been opened up and been made available to us 
And he says, and given this access that we have to this grace, he said, this is where we stand. And as we stand, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We stand here in the access that we've been given because of this reconciliation that is ours through our belief and acceptance of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So, so with this access to His grace, He said, we stand there. We stand there. We, uh, so well, we, we stand in His grace. We don't have to go looking for His grace. We exist in His grace. And as we exist in His grace, He said, that's why His grace abounds towards us. And His grace, as we stand in His grace, exist in His grace, refuse to be moved from His grace. In every situation, every circumstance, His grace will always be sufficient. Beloved, this is what, this is what, what, what we talk about when we say making full proof of your salvation. So it's not enough to be saved. Why, why is it that, why would we even want to be saved and, and that be the only benefit of of whatever sacrifice or submission or that we make unto Christ, we, we want to we want to make full benefit of our salvation. He says, if you as as you stand in the grace of God, see that's what grace really is. Grace is the power of God being released in your life, but only to the extent of where you allow for the influence of grace. It, it, all the things that God wants to do for you, you've been able to access them by faith. But even as, as you have gained access to His grace, you have to allow for His grace to be able to influence the life, to transform the life, to shape the life, to empower the life. Uh, beloved, there, there needs to be a reckoning with this newfound grace and access that we have simply because we have been reconciled once again unto God. Both entities, both those who were far off and those who were nigh through Christ Jesus and by one spirit. So he goes on in verse number 19, he says, so now having this access, he says, so now we're no more strangers and we're no longer foreigners but we are fellow citizens with the saints. And as we are fellow citizens now with the saints, we are now a part of the household of God. He says, so, so now there is, there is uh, not only salvation and access, but he says we have a new citizenship. You're no longer strangers. Uh, you're no longer foreigners said, but you are fellow citizens with the saints. So there's a new citizenship, the citizenship that you had before identified you with a particular group, with a particular land, with a particular nation, a, a particular heritage. But he said, you have a newfound citizenship. And it is in this place of citizenship, we share now a citizenship one with the other. No more Jew, no more Greek, no more Gentile, no more black, no more white. There is a citizenship that crosses any of those lines or boundaries that have been, been set up. We share a citizenship with the saints. And so, and so as a citizen, we now have whatever rights and privileges and authority uh, that has been allocated to that citizenship. And so as a citizen with the saints, what... what we're citizens now, not no longer citizens of the world, but we are heavenly citizens. Because as we are now citizens with the saints, we are a part of the household of God. And because we are a part of the household of God, not only do we have citizenship, but we have all of the privileges that go along with the citizenship. I'll give you an example. With Brother Paul, Brother Paul, a when, when they decided that they wanted to, to prosecute Brother Paul and, and to punish Brother Paul, uh, Brother Paul now uh, initiated uh, a, 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 what his rights as a Roman citizen. So Paul was born in Rome, which made him a Roman citizen. And so because he was a Roman citizen, the Bible says that he requested an audience with Caesar. 
And so as he had requested it, that was one of his rights as a Roman citizen. So those who were trying to judge him, to, to persecute him, to punish him, they had no authority to do so. Those who were trying to, trying to, to exercise some power over him, they had no authority to do so. And they did not have this authority to do so simply because of his citizenship. And beloved, let me tell you today, because of your citizenship, because you are a citizen of the household of God, uh, that, 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 that no, no one, no thing in the world has any rights or privileges or power that can be exercised over you unless they have been given the authority of the king. I'm a part of God's house. And so, and so the enemy can come and try to do all the things, anything that he wants to do, but he really does not have any authority. Uh, but, but, but that which I will surrender to him. And see, beloved, that's why it's important to know that you're, you're not of this world. You might be in it, but you're not of it, beloved. And so because we're not citizens of this world, we do not look to this world for our provision. And because we're not citizens of this world, we do not look for, to this world for our protection. Because we're not citizens of this world, we do not look to the world for anything. But we look to the household of God. Now watch what he says here. He says, so, so as now we are now of the household of God, he said, and you are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone of the building. Well, let's just track that. Let's just track that back. He says, okay, here's the building. You're now a part of the building. You're built on this foundation that has been laid. So let's, let's follow it back. He says, the apostles, the prophets, Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone. And so the building began with the laying of the cornerstone. That chief cornerstone, that was the first stone laid. And as that stone was laid, now added to that, to create this foundation was the prophets and the apostles. Well, now what's the work of the prophet? The work of the prophet is the prophet now was the foreteller or the teller of the word, the purpose, and the plan of God. It was the prophet now that foretold those things that had already been already been accomplished, but it is the prophet that tells us about those things that are contained in the Word of God. Now watch, what's, what's the responsibility of the apostle? Well, the apostle is the builder. And so there is, there is one who, re, the Word is released through the prophet, and it is now incumbent upon those who are the apostles now to take that, and lay the foundation for the building up of the kingdom. This is why in the scripture you'll see that up until the time that the church was actually born, the disciples were merely called disciples, learners. They were gathering, they gathered information, they had experience with Christ, but there was work to be done. Once now, once now the church was formed, they were now called apostles. Why? Because they had the responsibility to now build the kingdom, to build this house of God, uh, which is connected by the Spirit of God. And that which, was that which was a result of this is the church. Paul, Paul, that's why Paul is so important in Scripture, because Paul was an apostle. And Paul was a builder. Paul had responsibility for building several churches. And, and in the Scripture, you'll You'll, you'll find 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, uh, Ephesians. All of these were letters that Paul wrote to the churches that he had established. And those letters were written to address different situations and circumstances and, and different, uh, different venues and things that were going on in the churches as he made those, that circuit back around again to, to exercise the authority that he had over the church as the founder of those churches, establishing those churches by, in and of, and by the word of God. And so watch what he says. He says, so, so now, he says, Christ is the chief cornerstone. There was the foundation that has been laid by the prophets and the apostles. 
And now you now have been built upon this foundation that has been laid. Now watch, watch how this happens. He says here, in verse 21, he says, In whom all the building fitly framed, in Christ, the chief cornerstone, all the building is fitly framed together. And as it is fitly framed together, it grows up unto a holy temple in the Lord. He says, so now you've been added, but as you've been added, you've been fitly framed inside Christ, in the body of Christ, which is the church. And so we who are fellow citizens with the rest of the saints, we've all been added the same way. We've been added, we've been fitly framed unto the body. To be fitly framed means I laid one, I laid another right beside it. Then I laid another right beside it. Then I laid another right beside it. Each one being fitly framed together to lay aside and connect. To lay aside and connect. See, that's why the scripture tells us, beloved, that we have to be added to the church. Watch, watch this in Acts 2, uh, 40 and 41. He says, And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourself from this untoward generation. He said, And then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And they, in the same day, that were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And so those who heard the word and gladly received the word as they were saved by the provision allowed for in the word by grace through faith, they then were added to the foundation. Now watch what this word add means. It means to place beside, to lay aside, and to repeat that process until the building is erected because as you lay the stones each of those stones now as they were joined together became a part of the one building now watch this beloved because this is important because th there's a familiar scripture that explains this process as you go on further in Acts before we move on Acts says that as they were added, it said it was the Lord that added them. It was the Lord that added them. That's important. But Psalms 127 and 1, he says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. And so how, how is the Lord building the house? He says, as you receive his salvation by grace through faith, he said, it is the Lord himself, the discerner of the heart, who now adds now that soul that has been saved and filled with the Holy He adds that soul to the rest of the body. Lays down beside, adds it to the other souls that have already become a one of this body. Now watch this, beloved, because this is important. This is, he said, there's the adding of the soul. So as the Lord saved, the Lord added. The Lord saved, the Lord added. The Lord saved, the Lord added. That's important. Why? Because in this building, there is only a particular type of stone that is allowed to be added to the house. He said these stones have to be lively stones. Hmm. So, so what's in 1 Peter 2 and 5? He says, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now, 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 I want you to understand the difference, beloved, between the house of God and the house, the, the church, spiritual, and the church, physical. And you need to understand this, beloved, because I want you to know that it is possible for you to join the church physical and still not be added to the body spiritual. Why? Because the Bible, the Bible tells us here, we can't join the body. We have to be added to the body. And in the addition to the body, we're added to it to the extent to where, remember in the scripture when the, when the, when the Bible says that, that a man should, 
should leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife. When he cleaves to his wife, now that union is such to where you can't tell where one end and the other begins. He actually becomes one with his wife. And as they join together in this marriage covenant, they become one, one with the other. As we are added to the body, we become one. Right? Many members, one body. But those members now have to surrender to, by, to, to the Spirit of God and accept by grace through faith the salvation that is ours through the finished work of Christ. As such, we are now filled with the Spirit of that same Christ. And as we are filled with the Spirit, now we are no longer just ordinary stones, but we are stones that are full of life, lively stones. And we have positioned ourselves to be added to the body, added to the church. Beloved, that's important because there's so many people who join the church physical and, 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 and feel so assured in joining the church physical that they never, they never really aspire to join, to be added to the body of Christ. Uh, beloved, there, that's why there are so many, there are so many benchmarks within the, within the Word of God. And the Word of God says, okay, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. See, a lot of people have joined the church, they joined the bot, they joined the church physical, but never did they ever seek to be added to the church spiritual. And so, beloved, this is important because he says that as you are added to the church spiritual by God Himself, he saves a soul, he adds a soul. He said, and as the body, as the temple is erected, he says, so now you're building up, been built up a spiritual house. And in this spiritual house, you are built up an holy priesthood. So even as the priest in the Old Testament had the responsibility for offering up sacrifices unto God, as a part of this spiritual house, you are a holy priesthood, and you are to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable unto God. Acceptable, pleasing. For the Bible says that as we've been added to this house, now we no longer live by the standards of the world. We don't live by world of wisdom, but the just, those who have been justified, we shall live by faith. Because it is only by faith that we are able to offer up a sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing unto God. And in, in verse 22, finally he says, In whom ye are also built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. And the building has to be built the right way. Because God has every expectation of inhabiting the building. It has to be built the right way. And so, and so there has to be, there has to be, it has to be fitly framed together. There, there has to be an, an addition, not just a joining. Uh, there has to be a, a real investment made. And there has to be, there has to be life and the stones that are added. It's the only way that the building can be adequate for a habitation of God. And so now, how are the, how, how are the stones made alive? 2 Peter 1, 3 through 9. And we've, we've been here in the last few months. Watch what he says. He says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Watch. He says, so, as we have been endowed with the Spirit, we have become stones full of life. We are those lively stones. And are now, are now, we are now ready to be added to this body. Added. Added. Added with every other soul. And as we're added, we're being built up this spiritual house 
uh, and, and as a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto God. But something else is happening. Because remember, your citizenship has changed. And because your citizenship has changed, those things now that, that are a part of your citizenship, that define you, those things are being developed as well. And these are all things now that are developed in this relationship with God as you now have the opportunity to be partakers of His divine nature. In doing so, his nature is being developed. Watch this, beloved. Watch what he says. He says, and beside this, we're again, I'm now in I'm now in 2 Peter 1, verse number 5. And beside this, and beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. And the godliness, brotherly kindness, and the brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if these things be not in you, it said we have a tendency even as we have been added to the body to forget that we've been added to the body. It said if he lack these things, I'm still blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. Beloved, as you have received Christ as your Lord and Savior, God himself has added you to the body. Lively stones. New citizenship. New authority. New power. There's a new arrangement because the new me will never surrender again to those old precepts those old beggarly elements know because of my citizenship, I have an inheritance with Christ. As Christ was raised with all power, I participate in that. As, as this spiritual building has been raised up as a lively stone added to this building, I've been raised up in the same manner. Beloved, be careful, be careful how you build upon your house. And we'll talk more about that on next week. But beloved, isn't it good news that you're a citizen of heaven? Isn't it good news that you've been added to the body of Christ? Isn't it good news that having been added, you have gained an inheritance of whatever is Christ is yours also. Beloved, we thank you for joining in with the Bible study on today. We continue to pray that you and your families are being safe in this season. And we plead the blood of Jesus Christ as a hedge of protection around you and over you and extend that same prayer to everything that is attached to you.